Hi everybody, Ellen here. <laughs> Today I come to you guys with my July wrap up. I know I'm a little bit late with it, but better late than never. And I read a shitload of books this month. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, admittedly, it is because I am on vacation, so I've been reading pretty much non-stop and it's been awesome. So I ended up reading a total of 16 books and like two thirds of another one, so almost 17 books. Um, this is sort of where uh, just as many books as I used to read before I started reading, working full time. So I'm really happy about it and hopefully we continue on with this really, really good reading sprint, if you will. Um, but yeah, today I'm going to tell you guys what I read and what I thought about them. So the last book actually I ended up reading was um, The Shadow Side by Ballora Ruby. This is the first book in the series called York. And yes, they're building a lot of shit outside and so loud, but... We're just gonna try to ignore that. Um, but this is a middle grade book. We meet this set of twins named, they're named Tess and Theo, and they together with their friend Jamie lives in New York City. And there's this really famous building called the Morning Star Tower. And the twins actually that built this tower were really like rich, famous inventors and they sort of um, created this um, cipher that the person who solved the cipher would sort of get all of their um, assets including the buildings and the money and everything like that and since all of a sudden the Morningstar Tower is supposed to be you know toned down um, Tess and Theo and Jamie are trying to solve the shadow cipher to be able to save it um, it was really fun, a lot of different clues and everything like that. Um, they're definitely very, very smart kids and they do tell you that. Um, but I really like the characters and the plot and the sort of suspense of it all. Sometimes it was a little bit predictable, but I did still really enjoy it. And I think it gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. And then we have a shelf warmer that I finally read. Um, but this is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is the first book in a series that I think is called The Diviners. I'm not sure, it's supposed to be a quartet, I think. Um, but this is sort of a historical fiction with supernatural um, aspects of it. Um, because we meet this character named Evie and she, when she touches objects, she can sort of see what the object's been a part of, like sort of a, um, sort of a history. Like if she touches someone's shoe, she'll know the last like moments uh, what recently happened that the shoe was a part of. It's sort of weird to describe, but anyways, I hope you get my gist. Um, but yeah, Evie ends up going to um, New York. This is 1926. She ends up going to New York to live with her uncle, and he gets involved with this sort of a murder mystery. He's supposed to help the police because he's really... he owns this museum and he knows a lot of stuff about the occult and stuff like that. So the police ask for his help to solve these murders and Evie sort of gets wrapped in it as well and she think that the only thing that will be able to help solve the case is if she uses her power to, you know, get some clues. And it was really interesting. I really liked the historic aspect and the supernatural aspect. It was just really well written and I really liked the characters. Although Evie is sometimes kind of hard to, you know, like. Um, she's a handful to say the least. Um, but I really liked it and I think it now we actually have two graphic novels. Surprise, I know because I don't usually like graphic novels. Um, but I read Heartstopper Volume 1 and Heartstopper Volume 2, both written by Alice Oseman. Um, and this is about a boy who meets a boy and they may or may not fall in love. And these are actually not like it's really pretty uh, illustrations in it but they're all sort of black and white um you can actually read the i think it's hard stop in volume one online on tumblr for the author's tumblr so you can go check it out if you're insecure if, whether you like it or not i definitely read a few chapters there before purchasing them um but these volumes they're like the most precious and adorable love story ever and they definitely run into a lot of issues and troubles and everything like that but they're so freaking adorable and i just flew through them these are quite chunky graphic novels the second one is only 500 pages but since it's a graphic novel you just fly through them i finished the first one needed to read like the second one right away because they're so precious 
and I cannot wait until next year when the third one is supposed to come out because I love these so so much and I actually ended up giving both of the volumes 5 out of 5 stars. And then I ended up reading Words of Radiance Part 2 by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Stormlight Archives series. Um, I'm really enjoying the series so far. This one actually ends definitely with a big bang to say the least. Um, I'm really enjoying the characters and the plot and everything like that and as always it's really hard to describe these books but you know it's fantasy, it's magical, there's a lot of war and stuff like that um, but in this series they have like shard plates and shard blades really sought after sort of um, military items if you will um, that makes you all powerful and very strong and everybody wants to have them and they are at war with each other and they want to steal each other with short plates and short blades and they're sort of um, trying to um, get revenge on their murdered king and stuff like that and it was really really good, I really enjoyed it and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and then after that I read Edge Stanza by Brandon Sanderson this is a Stormlight Archive novella you are supposed to read this one after Words of Radiance Part 2 but before Oathbringer Part 1. Um, in this one we meet this character called Lift, which is sort of a minor character so far in the Starlight Arch Archives. Um, I have been to, uh, heard that Brandon Sanderson means to make a story arc a lot bigger in the comic books that are not yet written or nor released. Um, but Lift was a really funny character to read about. I don't want to say too much because spoilers, but she is a kid. She's not that old, like 12 I think she is, and uh, she has really cool powers, she is a thief, and she's pretty darn cool, um, and I really enjoyed this, it was a really quick read and very entertaining, and I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then I actually did pretty well, because I continue reading series, although it's a series that's not finished yet, so I wouldn't be able to finish the series this year, but... I miss loving this series so much that I don't even care anymore. Um, but I read three books in the same series this month. This is Everblaze, Never Seen and Lone Star, which is book three, four and five in the series called Keeper of the Lost Cities by um, Shannon Messenger. This is a middle grade series with really pretty covers. And... Ah. And in this series, we meet Sophie Foster. She is, I think, 12 years old when the series starts. And um, she finds out that she is not human. She's actually an elf. And she's brought back to the elven world. And turns out she has a lot of different abilities or powers, if you will. Um, she is. She gets to start this um, school, the elven school, where you're supposed to learn about your abilities and stuff like that. And shit goes down in this series it's ridiculous they're so like chunky honestly but they're so eventful and such quick reads and so many be so many lovable characters that just are amazing and you just love them there's so many, much like intrigues and like different you know happenings really there's so much shit going down so much action and cool stuff and I just tell of them so much and I'm so sad because I only own the sixth book and um, yeah the seventh book won't be out for a while in paperback so I'll have to wait but these are so such 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 a good series and you should definitely check them out if you haven't already so believe it or not I actually ended up giving all of the three books five out of five stars then I also read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling this is the second book in the Harry Potter universe I am slowly but steadily rereading the books in the series. I am loving it, of course. Chamber of Secrets has always been my least favorite Harry Potter book, but I'm so in love with the world that I don't even care. And this was such a good reread, and I loved every second of it. And I gave it 5 out of 5 stars, because how could I not? And then I also reread another book, and that was Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. This is the third and final book in the Hunger Games and this has always been my least favorite Hunger Games but I think like it's a theme in this haul uh, in this wrap up um, but shit goes down in this book so in the first book named Hunger Games we meet Katniss and she lives in this world where 
you know, there are 12 different districts and one boy and one girl from each district are chosen to be part of the Hunger Games in the capital where the bad guys are and they have to fight till death each year and, you know, the winner will survive and get a lot of uh, money and fame and stuff like that. Um, but it's very brutal, very bloody and gory kind of series. Um, but I love it. Um, and this was the first time we're reading the book in English and I really loved it. And I just love this series so much. Definitely one of my favorite series. I read like four or five times now, I believe. But such a good read. And I ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this was definitely the month of rereads uh, because I read reread Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. This is the first book in the, I want to say, Lifelike series. Not really sure how many books it's going to be. Um, but this is one of my favorite books of all time. It's so cool and kick ass. And in this book, we need a character named Evie just like in the diviners but very different um and she is actually in this sort of robot fighting thing and while she's in that fight she actually sort of uses some powers she didn't know she had and then all of a sudden the entire world knows about it because they were watching this on tv and while trying to get home from that robot fight she actually ends up finding this lifelike which is sort of a very very humanly looking robot it's actually so human looking you don't really know it's a robot until you cut it open um and she ends up bringing this uh, lifelike with her home and the lifelike is actually called ezekiel and uh, people go down go after her because of her powers and she needs to escape and stuff like that and it's pretty much about evie trying to find out who she is where she come from and what the hell happened it's so kick-ass, it's so funny, and my favorite characters are definitely Cricket, by far, but also Lemon Fresh. And this book is so good, and I give it 5 out of 5 stars. And the reason I reread that book was because I wanted to read Deviate, which actually came out in the end of June, I believe it was. So this is the second book, we get to continue on with the plots that we read in the first book because the f ah, books are falling everywhere luckily there's a couch right there um but this first book definitely ended with a bang this one takes off right where the first one ended this was really hard to predict definitely didn't take the turn i thought it would but um it was really good read i really enjoyed it it was so quick and we get to meet some new characters that i totally fell in love with in such a short period of time but I just, it was so good. And I ended up re uh, writing this book 5 out of 5 stars. I definitely did therapy after it because holy crap, and that ending. And then we have the ebooks I read. And, uh, and the first one was Opposite of Always by Jason A. Reynolds. This is a contemporary book. Um, we meet Jack, and he actually falls in love with this girl. And the she is actually like dying because of this disease and he pretty much just go back in time like five billion times in the attempt of trying to save her um this was <laughs> i am definitely not like um loving the trope of time repeating it's the timeline repeating all of the time like it can survive like maybe two or three times but this was like five billion times and it drove me freaking nuts I mean, I really liked the characters, but I didn't agree with some of their, like, choices and stuff. And I just, I couldn't, like, get over the fact that everything restarted five million times. I think it was, like, 11 times or something like that. I don't even know. But it drove me crazy in the end. Um, but I ended up giving this book um, 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then I read Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. And in this one we meet this girl who actually is sort of a Wiccan. And her best friend end up dying very like... Uh, suddenly everybody thinks that she committed suicide. But there's also two girls in a, from a completely different gang. So, so also... Um, that people also think uh, committed suicide but the thing is that our main character whose name i can't remember right now doesn't believe that her best friend actually killed herself because she felt like she would have told her and stuff like that um so she actually tries to bring her best friend back um to be able to find out what the hell happened to her and see if she remembers anything and you know 
under Girl Gang happening and this contemporary book it was so different it was so funny and entertaining so hard to predict and it was awesome and I really really liked it and I love the sort of witchy aspects as well and sort of the zombie feature in it it was really really fun and I gave it four out of five stars and then I also listened to The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan this is the third book in the Wheel of Time series still very very slowly but steadily making my way through these books. Um, like I think I've said before, it's not one of my favorite series, um, but it's quite okay. Um, it's pretty much about these three boys um, being taken out of their city because they want to protect their city. Um, there are some creepy people after them because one of them is supposed to be the Dragon Reborn and you don't know who it is or why. They have to leave, honestly, um, but they have to try to figure everything out, try to save the world and everything like that. Um, um, and yeah, this was the continuation of that. And it was not bad, <laughs> but I feel like it's kind of moving at a very slow pace because these books are ridiculously thick. Um, so I might lose focus at some points. I ended up giving this book 3 out of 5 stars and those were like the 16 books I finished but I also started reading Brandon Sanderson's um, Oathbringer Part 1 and I read like 450-ish pages of this book uh, and it's 650-ish so I had like 200 pages left when the month ended. I know I would have finished this if it wasn't for the fact that I went on vacation like city sightseeing in Belgium so I'm really, really sad about that because I was so close to finishing my TBR. Um, the TBR for this month was six books and I read like five books and two thirds. It was so close. <laughs> but what makes me really, really happy is that I managed to read a shitload of books. I read some rereads, I read some new books and I loved a lot of these books, which is really, really great. I definitely feel like it's get me pushing in the right direction when it comes to reading slump. Um, but yeah, if you have read any of these books, please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling, of course. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give me some thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the little button down below. And yeah, I hope we see each other in the next one. Bye!